Can you explain to people, I, I did the best I could in the opening, but I'm not Steve Moore, I'm Jesse Kelly, so I didn't do a very good job of explaining to people how much it disrupts a $20 trillion economy with God knows how many moving parts would you point to even parts of that economy and say, stop moving. It just doesn't work that way. Can you explain it to people? Well, it cost us $5 trillion in terms of all these governments <laughs> and the shutdowns of the economy. And we really have to wonder, and I'm, I'm you know, asking an honest question, you know, what did we get for this? Would, wouldn't we have been better off if we had just had the politicians tell the American people what was going on and letting Americans make their own decisions about whether they wanted to go outside, whether they wanted to go to work, whether they wanted to go to a business or a restaurant. And we know from what happened in the States now two years later, the lockdowns were a catastrophic mistake, even from a health perspective. They had very little positive effect, but they just destroyed uh, New York City. They destroyed many of our, you know, I'm from Chicago. Chicago was shut down for 18 months practically. And these cities, you know, still haven't been able to make a comeback. Then you have, you know, tens and tens of thousands of businesses that went bankrupt. You put tens of millions of Americans in the unemployment lines. You shut down our schools and deprive millions of our kids almost a whole year of schooling which is something that will have an extreme negative effect on on many of these kids unfortunately for throughout most of their life so somebody's got to point to me how any of this was a success well uh, you're the one that said you guys did a study and yes. I believe that there are a bunch of people on the left who still honestly think yeah the the, the lockdowns hurt the economy but it did save lives. And it's hard to get through to these people. Your lockdowns didn't do anything. The numbers don't show that. Yeah, so what we found, and this is confirmed by some you know, other major studies, uh, people, uh, some of the top health and economic researchers at Johns Hopkins University, that the lockdowns reduced the death rate from COVID by 0.1%. So that means maybe a few thousand lives were saved but look at the damn, by the way, there were hundreds of thousands of people who died from the lockdown. We call these the deaths of despair. Massive increases in the number of drug overdoses, suicides, uh, people who didn't were deprived of health care because the hospitals were not open. All of these things were major mistakes. And so I think that what hopefully we've learned from this experience is that the correct strategy, which is something that Early on, it was pretty clear what we should have done, which is to protect the vulnerable populations. The vulnerable populations were senior citizens, were clearly vulnerable. Anybody over the age of 70, you know, if they caught COVID, it could be, you know, cause death. And uh, obviously, people who had other health problems, you know, heart problems or uh, lung problems or diabetes, we know that they were vulnerable. So we could have protected, we could have done a better job of protecting that population. And the other 80% of us could have got on with our lives. But no, the government wanted to use this big, blunt instrument, uh, as you heard from Cuomo. We're going to decide what, by the way, how do you decide what businesses are essential and which are? Who, who makes that decision? Steve, I'm glad you brought this up. Well, one more thing on this before we move on, because we're going to talk about inflation. But yeah. it's not hard to call Andrew Cuomo a scumbag. Everyone knows that. Gavin Newsom, these guys, the things. It's not hard to point at them and say, okay, so you have a political hack governor who ruined his state. How do you explain the FDA, the CDC? We have these supposed nonpartisan government agencies who are giving out guidance to the entire country. And they are apparently politicized beyond belief. And if they're not politicized, they're idiots because they've gotten the whole thing wrong. How did we end up there? Yeah, this is the sad part of the story is that Americans, you and I and most Americans, we don't know who we can trust now because the CDC was, was incredibly politicized. Uh, you know, they were attacking Trump. And look, I worked for Donald Trump. He didn't make all the right decisions, but he made many right decisions and obviously Operation Warp Speed was something nobody thought was possible. We got that vaccine done in 10 months when the, uh, the, the uh, New York Times said it would take three or four years. And, and you, all you have to do is just look back at the things that the CD said, CDC said two years ago and, and now what we know is, is the truth. And it's heartbreaking actually. I mean the problem is that all science has become well, political science. It's all political, and that's 
that's heartbreaking that's not what science is supposed to be but there is a bias in all of these things and what really worries me the most is we are going to see more variants of this COVID and look in Philadelphia today they're bringing back all these mask mandates so nobody seems to have learned the lessons of what we got right and what we got wrong just protect the people who are in the nursing homes by the way one other quick thing Andrew Cuomo is a, you know for his behavior in terms of his treatment of women is is indefensible but he is he should be held criminally liable for he's responsible for the deaths of thousands and thousands of seniors who were put in nursing homes that had contagious people. I mean, how stupid was that? Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History, The Forgotten Genocide, the first episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.